Today we're going to be building the best home floor plan in the letter J. We are back on our alphabet lot here in our J shell. Now if you guys are new to this series, every single letter of the alphabet we furnish with a specific theme that starts with that letter of the alphabet. So for today's theme, the three most common suggestions I got were J for jungle core, Japanese, or Japandi. I was really intrigued by J for Japandi because I've never done a Japandi themed home before. Also so Japandi does technically fall under the Japanese theme as well. So I figured if I do J for Japandi, I could kind of kill two birds with one stone. Once again, I had to put my researching hat on and go to Google to check out what Japandi really means. And basically, Japandi is the perfect fusion of Japanese and Scandinavian, focusing on minimalistic designs that are aesthetically pleasing yet highly functional. We can expect to find a plethora of natural materials, muted colors, clean lines, and minimal yet curated furnishings. Honestly, the inspo pegs were definitely up my alley. You guys know I love a neutral minimalistic home. And since this is the letter J, I think if possible, I might lean a little bit more Japanese rather than Scandinavian, but still try and keep it under the overarching vibe of Japandi, if that makes sense. Also, please leave your comments down below what theme we should do for the letter K. I'm already dreading all of those diagonal walls and just the weird shape of that home in general, so I'm gonna need a really Really good theme to make up for it, you guys. And with that being said, let's get to floor planning this Japandi slash Japanese themed home. Okay, full transparency, I've been staring at this letter J for like one minute in silence, trying to figure out what we could possibly do for a floor plan. And I've come to the conclusion that the letter J just absolutely sucks in terms of making an efficient home floor plan. Not gonna lie, it's just not looking great. We just have a bunch of like skinny looking hallways, not to mention these curved walls down here that just aren't doing us any favors. So. So, um, yeah. Six and a half hours later. Okay, here's the floor plan I've come up with for the letter J. In the bottom corner here, this is going to be the one and only bedroom. This bottom bit here is going to be our living room. This platformed area in the middle is going to be our entranceway. At the top of the J on this platformed area, we have our dining room, which flows into our kitchen. And lastly, our bathroom in the corner here. Trust me, I'm not happy about having the bathroom all the way in the corner there, but truly there was no opportunity to put the bathroom anywhere closer to the bedroom without making like an awkwardly narrow one tile hallway as a result. So I think this is the best floor plan for the letter J, but let me know if you guys would have done anything differently. Okay, let's get started on the kitchen and dining room up here. So I actually wanted to replace these walls with some room dividers. Those walls there were actually more like placeholder and I'm gonna grab the ones from City Living. Something like this is what I was thinking of but also I think we have ones from Eco Lifestyle that could work as well. The Ego Lifestyle ones come in a lighter wood swatch, so it just depends on what kind of wood tone we want to go for in this build. I do prefer the lighter wood swatch, let's go for that, and then I want to find some nice light wood floors as well. The first swatch of these Eco Lifestyle wood floors actually blends in pretty nicely. Now for walls, I want to go for something white or maybe light gray, maybe even go for some sort of concrete or stone. Let's try this beigey gray concrete textured one from the base game. It's called Unbent Smoothness. For the dining section, I do have it raised up on a single platform, so it is rather open concept, but I do want to give like the illusion of a sliding door just in case you want a little bit more privacy in your dining space. So I'm gonna take the black swatch of this like wall divider decoration from the spa day pack and I'm going to size it down by one and then I'm going to alt place it just right up against the edge right here and then grab some of these snowy escape columns to just anchor that. I think that looks super cute. It looks like one of those modern sliding pocket doors. For the actual dining space, I think this would be the perfect opportunity to grab this more traditional one from snowy escape and then obviously let's grab the traditional tatami mat flooring as well. Maybe we can bring in some more natural light with these snowy escape windows. And for overhead light fixture, let's grab this medium height one from the tiny living pack. Now to finish this off, let's just grab some of these shoes from the dream home decorator pack and just place them right next to the dining room since you're supposed to take your shoes off before you go inside. And here's our first room done, the dining room. It definitely is a little bit more traditional and I used a ton of snowy escape items here, but I do think I put a little bit of a modern twist on it with like the light fixture and the sliding door. So I hope you guys like it. Let's move on to the kitchen. now. 
we have a tiny, tiny little space for a kitchen. It's going to be a very cozy kitchen, let me tell you. Let's just hope we can get at least the basics in here. Now, I do think I want to go with the matching Snowy Escape counters in this build. I just love the natural wood texture with these ones, and I think it goes well with the minimalistic and clean lines aesthetic that the Japandi style calls for. This is basically all we can fit in this kitchen, but at the same time, it's everything we need, so I'm not really complaining. To tie it all together, I think it would be nice to grab these same eco lifestyle slats and put them along the wall just to create a kind of backsplash and add some visual interest. Here's how it's looking like. I just added one window above the sink for some natural light and this modern hood fan. I just cluttered up these shelves with some simple white plates and cups and some pots and pans. Now let's just add a simple runner rug. The first one that comes to mind is this one from Fitness Stuff Pack. It's really weird, but Fitness Stuff Pack honestly has a lot of really great rugs for some reason. So I noticed we have this little nook in the corner here, and I do remember that the Japandi style is all about having functionality in your home as well as minimalism. So I kind of thought it would be nice to have these built-in shelves to put all of these cups on instead of putting them under the sink. I don't know, it kind of just gives a little bit more depth to this kitchen. I'm just going to swap out the overhead light fixture for this one from Snowy Escape and then maybe choose it in like a white swatch to give it more of that modern look. Also going to add this skinny base game plant to the corner here and finish off this space with a garbage can. So here's our kitchen area all done. It's super tiny and cozy, but it does have lots of clean lines, neutral colors, and natural textures, which is exactly what the Japan D aesthetic calls for. And overall, I think it turned out pretty perfect considering how small the space was. Okay, why don't we finish this bathroom super quickly just because it's right here and we can't really ignore it. I definitely want to include a soaker tub in this bathroom and I think that it would be perfect to use this one from Snowy Escape. It looks like those ones that you find in Japanese ryokans and stuff. It's super pretty and just like calming looking. For floor tile, I want to use something from the stone section, just really leaning into those natural materials and textures. And I kind of think these ones from Dino could be perfect. Okay, I actually changed it to this more gray color scheme and then added the same wooden slats on the wall. I feel like the black was just looking a little bit too harsh. Now for toilet and sink, I guess I'll just go for the toilet that comes with Snowy Escape. I mean, why not? And then for the sink vanity, I guess this base game one kind of matches just because it has like the wooden vanity at the bottom here. For mirror, I want to go with this clean round one from Spa Day because I want this bathroom to just have like nice spa vibes in general. Now let's grab these shoji windows. I really like these ones from Snowy Escape because they're not like completely transparent. So you don't have to add any curtains and they're perfect for bathrooms because nobody can see inside. And most importantly, nobody's gonna get mad at me for not adding curtains in my bathrooms, even though my Sims never care about privacy anyways. And last but not least, we must finish this bathtub off with this a nice relaxing candle because you can't have a relaxing bath sesh without candles, okay? And here's our bathroom area all done. It's simple and super relaxing and we used a lot of natural textures like wood and stone to match the rest of the home. So I really like it. Time to move on to the rest of the home. So I just put this door from Snowy Escape here because this is going to be our front door section. Now here I was thinking that maybe we could have a little desk area just to make it a little bit more functional. I'll just grab this simple wood table from the base game and just slot it right in here. It fits literally perfectly. Perfectly. For the desk chair, I definitely want to find something that has maybe a little bit of wood in it, again, leaning into those natural textures. Maybe this one from the Growing Together pack could be cute. I'm kind of liking this pop of like dark reddish brown. This space definitely needs a little bit of color. And then I'll just grab these pictures from the new book nook kit and size one of them down and just like lean them up against the wall. I'm a huge fan of these new paintings just because of how simple the frame is. And intentional minimalism is really important with this aesthetic, so I'm not going to put any unnecessary clutter here. This is it. I just added this contemporary bookshelf behind the desk here and then added some doorway essentials like this coat rack and the shoe rack. Now let's just choose a rug for the entryway. This small vase game one always does the trick for me. I love the shade of green. It's like neutral and adds some color, but it's not too green if you know what I mean. And that's all we really need for this little office slash entryway space. I think that we made this space very functional considering it's just like a hallway slash entryway. So yeah, A plus in my opinion. 
on to the lower part of the J. This is where our living room is gonna be. Now, this is a really weird shape for a living room. I'm not gonna lie. I don't really know what I'm gonna do here. I feel like our best bet is to maybe put the TV against this flat wall and then put the couches against here. That separates out the space just a little bit and then we have some room back here for activities or something. The goal of this room is to just make it as comfy and cozy as possible and I feel like this snuggly sofa from the new book nook kit could do the trick. And I do not like how the couch sticks out further than the wall. So I might grab more of these like wall dividers to create like a false extension of the wall. Okay, there's our little wall extension. I don't know, I think it looks kind of cool. Now on this side, we do need to choose a TV. I'm thinking of just going for like a simple flat screen TV mounted on the wall. Sometimes I like going for this ultra expensive one from City Living and then sizing it down to like a more normal size. I don't know, I just think that it looks cleaner that way. And for the TV unit, I'm just gonna grab these super simple cabinets from the base game, grab the half tall one like this, use the left square bracket key to size it down, and then just put like maybe three of these next to each other like that. It gives off this cool floating shelf look, which I think is so clean and minimalistic. Obviously, these are storage shelves too, so you can imagine all of their like TV junk that's like in there, but it's stored away nicely and out of sight. And for rug, let's go with just my favorite city living fluffy rug in this beigey cream color. I don't really think we actually have space for a coffee table, but what we do have space for is possibly one of those poofs from Snowy Escape. Maybe just put it slightly in the middle, but a little off to the side like that. It will kind of act as a coffee table, but also like an ottoman that you can put your feet up and rest. Next, I'm gonna grab this luscious plant from, I believe it's from like the backyard stuff pack. And for light fixture, I'm just grabbing this black one from the Discover University pack. You guys know how I feel about adding a black light fixture in a bright white neutral space. So in my opinion, this just really helps ground the space and add that much needed darkness. That's gonna be it for the couch area. I really truly wanna lean into the minimalism aspect and everything is just gonna be stored in those cabinets like I said. So let's move on to kind of this area of the living room. It would be kind of cute to put maybe this electric keyboard in the corner here, maybe in this like lighter gray swatch. And then in this corner, I thought it would be kind of cool to maybe actually put like a little laundry nook. I haven't really included like a dedicated laundry area in many of my builds so far, but something about this little nook is just screaming for me to put a laundry area. <laughs> Here's our little laundry nook all done. I just added another one of these counters here so you could like sort your laundry and fold it as well as this shelf here to put like your detergent and stuff on it. I just added in this laundry day rug by the way, but I really love this space. It's super cute and cozy. It's also like really unexpectedly functional, but the best part is when you're over on this side over here, you can't even really tell that the laundry room is there because of these slats, but at the same time, it all still feels very open concept, which I love. So I must say I'm quite pleased with myself here. On to the last room, and here is gonna be our one and only bedroom. So I did see this design on Pinterest that I kind of wanted to replicate, and basically they used a pattern very similar to this one, and they used it as a headboard. So I might try and do that right here. And I think that this technique would work the best with this plain white bed from Seasons. Maybe it would look cooler if we like doubled it up like this and made it an extra high headboard or something. The Pinterest photo also used these like woven overhead lights that look really similar to these ones from the Desert Lux kit. That looks pretty cute. Now for end tables, for some reason, I'm really leaning towards just these classic poofs from the Tiny Living Pack. I don't know what it is, but maybe it's the texture of them. It is mandatory that we find a rug that is equally as cozy as everything else in this room. And my mind immediately went to this new one from the Book Nook kit. Now I did mention before that this rug was was not as good as my classic favorite fluffy rug from City Living. However, this rug does have a very important role to play and that role is when you've already used the fluffy rug once in your build and you don't want to reuse the fluffy rug in every single room, you can lean on this rug. It kind of gives off a similar cozy vibe but nobody's going to get mad at you for being repetitive. Okay, that's good for the bed area. Now let's just add a dresser or something in this corner. 
And it's definitely not ideal to be working with a curved wall, especially when we want to place like a super long dresser. So we are limited in our options here. Okay, this is probably the option I hate the least. I tried a bunch of them so far. This single towel dresser from Tiny Living seems to be doing the trick here. It's just, you know, it's small enough that the curved wall doesn't completely ruin it. And then maybe we'll just add like a little laundry basket and a plant on either side of this dresser. Laundry basket there because we do have a laundry room. So we definitely have to make use of that. And then the simple base game plant just on this side. On top of the dresser, I'm just gonna put these skincare essentials and some makeup. And then completing the wardrobe area with this simple base game full length mirror. And here is our Japandi bedroom all done. I really like it. I love the neutral color scheme. I love all of the nice natural textures, of course. I think it goes with the rest of the home. And I just love minimalistic homes in general because it means you don't have to put a ton of clutter everywhere, which makes my job easier, honestly. Now we could end it here. However, I think it would be cool if we added a little bit of an outdoor section in this little space in between the J. What I'm gonna do is take this window and replace it with one of these sliding doors right here. So now this sliding door will open out into this kind of courtyard area. I'm gonna take this fence from the base game and just like outline a little section right here. And I'll just raise this section up so it's in line with the door so there's no like gap there. A couple of you suggested that if I did go for a more Japanese theme for the letter J, I should include some sort of zen outdoor space with like a pond or fountain. So I think that would be a really good idea to put in this little space here. Here's the fountain area. So we can obviously add like these cute little lily pads and stuff. These ones are from Snowy Escape. So they're obviously gonna be perfect. And these lotus lanterns from City Living would also work perfectly here. We can also just like change the color of the water altogether. This one has like these cute cherry blossom leaves, which is super pretty. I think I'm gonna go with that one. I switched it over to nighttime just to see how like the candles and stuff look at night and it looks so good. I placed this glass table with these two beautiful iron chairs. I imagine you can come out here and enjoy your tea or coffee and sit by this beautiful pond like day or night, it would be perfect. And then in the corner here, I think it would be cool to put this really big lamp lantern here. It has like a cute little candle so it's perfect for nighttime and it also just acts as like a really pretty decorative piece as well. I put these wooden slats on the wall just to add a little bit more texture to the wall. Also it was feeling kind of cold with just like concrete walls everywhere so I think that ties in that warm wood aesthetic really nicely to the outside. And lastly, to add just a little bit more greenery, I think I'm gonna get these wall vines right here. I think the pink ties in really nicely with the pink in the fountain. And I'm just gonna stack these along this blank wall right here. It just helps to make this outdoor area feel that much more lush. And there you have it, you guys. Here is our Japandi slash Japanese J-shaped home. I really love how it turned out, you guys. I love the modern touches that I included throughout the build. I will definitely say that I think I leaned a little bit more Japanese with the decor just because I used so much snowy escape, but I did try to add like a modern twist on things with the neutral colors, the clean lines, and the overall minimalistic design style that the Japandi aesthetic calls for but I've also just never done a Japandi style home before so maybe I got it right you guys have to let me know this definitely isn't like a traditional Japanese home by any means it is fairly modern looking so I don't know maybe I got it completely right I also love this little outdoor section thank you guys for suggesting that I do that I think when I can I definitely will try to furnish the outdoor bits when it makes sense the floor plan also worked out surprisingly well especially with the addition of this surprise little laundry nook I don't know I was really pessimistic in the beginning about this floor plan. I just thought it was the worst in the world. But now that it's all said and done, it actually feels extremely functional and I would totally live here. As per usual, let me know what ideas you have for the letter K for my next episode. I already saw some suggestions saying K for kawaii or K for kid core, which both of those sound amazing. But definitely let me know if you have any other suggestions as well. I'm also gonna put each shell on the gallery so you guys can try this challenge out for yourself and send me your results on Twitter or on Instagram. If you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and leave a comment down below what you thought about it. It helps signal to me that you guys are enjoying it and you want me to make more episodes. Besides that, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I hope you guys have a lovely day and I'll see you guys all in my next episode. Love you!